Look at this, this is all, it's all ice, it's frozen. Ice in the jar. Oh. G'day everyone, Adam here going overland. This week I want to talk to you about the car and how it's gone in these cold climates, what I've done to get prepare it, and things that we've learnt along the way. All right, so give us a thumbs up. Hope you enjoy this week's video. Hope you get a few tips, especially if you're gonna head down to some cold climates. It's an incredible place. Very beautiful, very rugged. Um, loving it. Not happy. He's gone straight in the tent. Oh my god. Ugh. Okay, so we're at Kosciuszko National Park. Average daytime temperature is probably about three to four degrees. Nighttime it's getting down below zero, well below zero. Uh, the worst we've had it has been negative six. Uh, tonight it's supposed to be really cold as well. So having your car set up right is really important, especially if you're going to camp somewhere remote like we are. But even then, if you're not, even if you're in the town or a resort up in the mountain, anywhere cold, you've got to be prepared and prepared right. Because if you get a blizzard or anything like that, you could be stuck. It's not fun on a holiday. You'd be stuck somewhere waiting for help. So be prepared. And before I forget, I've got to thank all you guys for all your tips and comments you guys have been leaving us. So big thanks to you guys. I'm going to give you guys a big thumbs up. Hope you give our channel a thumbs up, help support us. All right, the car. So number one, good batteries. You probably heard on a couple of our videos how hard it is us for us to start the car up. Look at all that. Oh, that smells bad. She's cold, she's very cold. And if we didn't have a good battery, uh, we might struggle a lot to fire it up. So, the battery, the starting battery is about a year old. We bought it just before our lap of Australia. And it's holding about 12.6 volts in the morning. So, our starting issues aren't from the battery, which is good. Deep cycle battery, we bought that just before the trip. Not a problem, the fridge is barely running. So, the critical thing is your starting battery. Make sure it's in good condition and it can handle the cold climates. Number two, if you've got a diesel, glow plugs. New or good glow plugs. This car's always been a bit hard to start in cold climates. It's really showing it down here. It's struggling. I've been going it three times, and even then it doesn't seem to be enough. So, yeah, when we get home, that'll be our next thing that we could do. New glow plugs. They're not expensive. On these old trucks, they're easy to do. The new cars, I'm not sure. I think every 100,000 kilometers you're supposed to change them. All right, next item, good tires, all right? If it's icy, you want good traction. We're running all trains, BFG all trains. So far, the roads haven't been icy, but if they were, um, you want good tires. You want plenty of tread. The roads are very wet when it's not snowing or icy, so you need good tread um, and plenty of it. If your tires are getting low on tread, throw some on. It's not worth an accident. It's not worth you know, a trip to the hospital, riding your car off, the insurance fees, all that over saving a couple of bucks on a new set of tyres if they're getting close to um, getting renewed. So, good tyres. Another thing we have is snow chains. We haven't had to use them yet, but I'm glad we've got them. If we get a blizzard or something in this remote spot, I know I can throw them on, we can get out of here. So, good tyres, and if you're down this way, Higher snow chains, they've got them everywhere. Uh, we've made some up because I enjoy sort of that sort of thing, tinkering and stuff. So, yeah, snow chains, good ties. Our next tip for you guys is leave your handbrake off overnight. If you're driving around and it's wet roads like it normally is up here, 
your water's splashing up into your brakes, you leave your handbrake on overnight, temps drop well below zero, your handbrake can freeze on. And it, you know, you'd be driving around, it'll eventually un unfreeze and open up, but if your handbrake runs off your brakes, you could overheat your brakes. On a mountain pass, it's not very fun having overheated brakes and you know, could cause an accident. So leave your handbrake off, put it in gear. If you're in auto, put it in park. If you're on a steep slope, turn your wheel so it's full lock into this hill. So if it does move, it'll, um, it won't just run away down the hill. If we're on a hill, we also put it in four wheel drive low range. Look at the ice on the patrol. Oh, <laughs> that is so cool. Oh, yeah, the solar system's not going to be working. Very Next well. item, simple one your wipers, leave them off your windscreen, otherwise, they can freeze overnight. We also have a silicon uh, scraper to scrape any ice off. We've had to use it a couple of times. Uh, we do the mirrors, the windscreen, all that stuff. While I'm talking about windscreen, it's important in the morning. But it's freezing cold don't put your heater on the windscreen it can crack it really easy especially if you've got a small chip or crack already we've got two cracks they have not spread so far and i think the reason why that is is we've not run the heater on the windscreen we run the heat just go blowing straight into the cabin um, and it's been fine the windscreen slowly heats up if it does fog up we're putting it on the air con and we're putting it on cool just for the windscreen to defrost. Next thing I got, you can probably see, I've got a snorkel beanie. It's just stopping any of that driving rain getting into the into the snorkel and into the air take. You don't want any of that. So that just helps out a little bit. That oil-based filter blocks a bit of that rain and water getting in. Okay, engine oil. I looked into it. We're running the Penrot 15. I think it's Penrot. I'll put it in if it's not. 15W50, I looked into it, that's fine for temperatures down to negative 15. So we didn't run any specific specific engine oil for down here. Um, this old girl likes that oil, she doesn't drink it too much. So that's what we stuck to. We stuck to the regular engine oil that we run. Just do your checks before you come up here with your engine oil. The coolant, we were fine. We did some checks and all that. You guys helped us out with that as well. Um, the coolant we're running up in Brisbane is fine for down here. It's fine for negative 15 as well from memory. So that's fine. It's a 50-50 mix between uh, antifreeze, anti-boil and demineralized water. <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> Another thing I've done, especially these old cars with the keys, I put some tape over the locks. I, I read about it. I got some research from you guys, I think. You put tape over your locks, if it rains, water gets in your lock, you, sometimes it freezes overnight, your key won't open your door. So every night we're putting some tape over the doors and so far we've been fine with that. Now it gets dark down here really quick and really early. Five o'clock sun setting and it is pitch black. We haven't seen the moon, maybe because of all the cloud cover. Good lighting, so we got LED aftermarket lights and we've got the Augs being uh, spotlight, really good. We did a run into Kuma to pick up our skis. Uh, time we got back, it was pitch black. So good lighting is important, guys. We've put a cup of water out here. Oh, look at that. Hey guys, cup of water frozen solid. Another thing down here <laughs> is make sure when you get to the base of the mountain, you're low on diesel, if you're running a diesel vehicle and fill up on Alpine diesel. It just doesn't clog up overnight with the really cold temperatures. It stays uh, more fluid, it won't freeze in your fuel lines. So yeah, make sure you get down here, low tanks of fuel, fill up at the bottom of the mountain, and then, um, then you're right. Yeah. Oh, look at the road. Oh, wow. Oh, do we need snow chains? Not yet, but we might. <laughs> Wow. Cool, so we're... Um, couple we're other items, if you guys are going to be four driving down here like we've been, just on a fire trail, nothing serious, but everything's wet, everything's muddy, so max tracks or recovery boards are important. Uh, we also bring a chainsaw because we've seen a lot of trees blown over the track. Luckily, it's all been cleared away, but chainsaw are probably really important in places like this. The wind can pick up really well. And another thing is a winch. 
a lot of hills, a lot of, you know, muddy climbs, ice, snow, you saw all that driving into this campsite, there's a lot of snow. So a winch, especially if you're towing, really important to have that and all your recovery gear and know how to use it and make sure it works before you come down here. Really important, guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, I think that's it from me. Hope you got some tips from that. The old girl's running really well, she is. Just those cold starts. She's a Queenslander, she doesn't like cold starts, just like me. So yeah, I hope you, got, you guys got some tips. I've learned a lot coming down here and I hope I can transfer some of what I learned to you guys. Anyway, give our channel a thumbs up, really helps us out, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> She's not happy. Oh my goodness.